So, how do you solve a problem like Mariah? As my brother said, spoiler alert, you can't. So there you go, I'm just an Australian girl with the world at her feet, working in public relations and communications, who's learning about life and myself every single day. Join me as I tell stories, share my outlook on life, and just talk utter garbage. This podcast is where I talk about my world, your world, and the world around us, to hopefully inspire or just entertain. But it'll be fun, I promise. On today's episode, I talk about our dollar bills. Let's get our financials at least a little bit sorted for the start of 2019. I have a new segment on making 2019 a better year, or a more fun year, and have some good life advice to go by. So, let's get started. Welcome, I'm back for another episode of How Do You Solve a Problem Like Mariah. And I'm a bit tired tonight. Um, The weekend of Hen's Party um, was very successful. Also turned into Sunday sippers. So, um, I actually got up at 5am this morning to make my lunch because I couldn't last night. I was very much nappy and prepared it all and then left it in the fridge so I still had to buy lunch at work awesome but let's just get started on today and my life hack for this fortnight is to pay it forward at your coffee shop or just in general so think of what you can do to pay it forward even if it's once a week so I went to a coffee shop slash cafe in the middle of Melbourne um, in a laneway and it's called In A Rush. And what they do is if you add $3.50 to your meal, you supply uh, someone who is homeless with a bowl of soup. So they get some a meal and you get to write them a note. So when they come in, they get to read the note and enjoy some food. I think that was an awesome idea, but even if you can think of ways to pay it forward, whether it's something little like giving spare change to someone that is like five cents short in the grocery line. But let's pay it forward and do something nice. And I thought that cafe in Melbourne was an awesome idea. If you're a business owner, maybe think of a way that you can pay it forward. My other life hack is practical and it's ant strips. I am having the worst luck with ants at the moment. Went and bought the strips that you can put on your windowsill and hopefully the ants go away because they're actually driving me insane. So my boss told me about these ant strips you can buy. You don't need to have them inside your house. You can put them outside. But I've noticed a dramatic decrease in ants. There was some even in my sock and undie drawer. So they were getting out of control. So anyway, I want to move into a new segment and it's just on how to make 2019 a little bit better, even if it's something super small. And if you have any suggestions of how you've started to make this year better, one of mine, and I think I'm really going to love this at the end of the year, is I'm taking a photo every single day and I or I pick a photo from every day and I'm going to keep them for the rest of the year. And it's more just of an easy reflection. Last year I did the memories once a week and I loved reading over them because I was so cool. But um, I think this one will be great because I've got my phone on me all the time anyway and I'll probably take photos at least one a day. So I pick one, put it in a little photo album on my phone and then possibly make some form of video at the end of the year. It's not too late. I'm sure you've probably taken a photo every day since the start of Jan anyway. So maybe backtrack and or even just start today. But take a photo every day for a year. We'll give that one a go. Now that leads me into what this episode is going to mainly be about and it's more of my recommendation and that's let's try and get our finances in order for 2019 like really start thinking about our future I started this early last year but obviously it takes a lot of time and I'm nowhere near where I want to be but I think really it's hard to be good with money let's be honest there's I don't think anyone's really excellent with money we just learn over time but I think there's a few things that we can do even try and make extra money if you want before we go into learning how to manage our money so things just like getting a money tin I have one up in my shelf and I counted it the other day and it has 200 bucks in it and I've literally never have cash on me so I never really have change to put in it but even when you put in a little bit once a week if you go out and you have your loose goldies chuck them in make a huge difference if you haven't already read the barefoot investor I'll discuss that a little bit more in a second. 
his book, you really do have to stick to it. And I haven't been the best at it and that's probably why it's not taking me – it's taking me longer to get to where I am. But read it and follow it and he has some really good advice. And then there's a podcast called The Pineapple Project, which I'll also discuss later. And it's very similar but it's a little bit more humorous and probably a little bit more achievable. I think the barefoot sometimes – I find it's really hard to stick to some certain things, but this podcast is also really awesome. And also just have some money away for when you need it, and that's probably where your money tin can come into place, but that's also what the Barefoot Investor talks about. When you have spare money, don't buy something just because you've got spare money. Actually save it. So even if you use a method of putting away money into another account every single day, there's a cool picture that I saw that our great friend Nicola she must have posted it and it came up in her memories and I saw she'd commented on it. I'll add it in the show notes, but it really adds up. It adds up to like $1,500 or $1,300 a year if you put it in every day or monthly or weekly. But if you follow it, it will really be effective. But even I chose the month of December to use every day to put money in a bank account. And even if it was just one cent one day to round out my bank account balance or one day I had leftover money, so I just put in like $50 it really added up. I think I ended up putting like in that month a couple hundred extra into my savings. So that was awesome. Also, I think it's important we start investing for our future. So whether that's in a Comsec app where you can invest in shares or if you want to go a little bit smaller because you're unsure, there's an app called Raise. So what it does is if you buy a coffee for $2.95, It'll round up to $3. So it'll take that $0.05 cents and it'll invest it. And you can pick whether you invest. And what it does is it allows you to pick whether you do risky investments or you can go moderate or you can go really low. Obviously, it kind of forecasts based on what you put in it and how much you might essentially earn over it long term. But it's just a really easy one because you don't even notice the money. The one thing I don't like about it is it might like take it out every couple of days. So you might find like $7 comes out. But then at the same time, it's only $7. It is a really, really cool app. But yeah, it's just investing and you don't even really have to do anything. They do it all for you and you can add extra money into it and use it as a small savings account. I mean, so far, I'll just have a quick look at mine, but, and it also tells you how much you're spending. So it gives you, a gave me a notification the other day to said I'd spent $600 more this week than I did last week. So I was like, oh, well. It's also a good accountability partner. So if I look at mine right now, I have invested $76. Well, that's the amount is just from rounding up. You can do that if you want. You can put in as much as you like weekly. But I've actually earned $2 just from the investments because the stocks are up. So obviously it's a long-term thing and you just let it grow. Don't even look at it all the time. I mean, I haven't looked at that in weeks. So... It's a really cool app. Check that out. And then also for long term, it's important to start thinking about our super and Barefoot talks about that, but maybe try and investigate your super and see if you can get a better deal somewhere else. Uh, in the Barefoot, it tells you how to do that. But even if you can afford to add a little bit more from your tax, it definitely adds up. Also, uh, don't get ripped off around any form of insurance you have. So whether it's health insurance, utilities, cars, everything. I think it's important to review it yearly. Even when your car insurance is due, just try and find a better deal somewhere else. As you get older and your rating goes up in terms of no claims, it's going to be cheaper. And even utilities always have deals. You don't, you're not locked into anything. Or well, you can go for the ones where you're not locked into anything. And then you can just shop around. Health insurance, you're never locked in. You can go wherever you want um, and just weigh everything up that you your expenses are because I'm sure you're getting ripped off somewhere. Also, for me, it's experiences over items. So the way I look at it is I'd rather experience something than buy things. And it's up to you. Just maybe pick what you prefer. If you'd prefer to have possessions or have experiences, then pick that. If you want a good balance, though, you have to make sacrifices on things you go to. So maybe if there's an event coming up, just ask yourself, have you been there before? And if you have, do you need to go again? Is Also, another one is, is there going to be another time when I have more money that I can go? So, for example, like the Australian Open is in Melbourne 
and I went a couple of years ago and I really wanted to go again but I don't have the money and it's on every year so potentially next year I've had more money or as a Christmas present I can buy a ticket to go. Just things like that. If you've been there multiple times and every time you go it's still the same thing, well, maybe you should think about not going next time or going and not spending as much money as you usually would on things. Also, the last one is if you're planning a trip, use that as motivation to not go out as much because you have a trip waiting for you. So, for instance, I'm going to Europe this year, hopefully, and what my motivation is if I say no to things to say, well, that's an experience I get to do in Europe. So definitely recommend that one if you've got something coming up that you're looking forward to. And yeah, so that leads me just to talking about Barefoot. So the Barefoot Investors book and majority of people probably read it, so it might even be worth going over it again. But I think the key learnings out of that is to start investing for long-term benefits. And it's also never too early no matter what age you are. And like I said, Raise is a great one for that and Comsec. Um, the only thing with Comsec is you need to make a $500 investment to start. There's a, a US investing-based site called Robinhood and they don't have any fees or um, a limit in investing. But the only thing is that it's not available in Australia. I'll have a link in my show notes. Um, click on that and it will it will actually notify you when, it's, when it comes to Australia. So I'll put in the link, show notes, click on it, put your name up. You just have to put your email in it and then you'll know when it's coming in. But it looks like a really good investing app. Also, maybe don't worry about cryptocurrency unless you're really educated in it. I think it is going dead. But anyway, as for the barefoot investor, the one thing, if we're going to summarize it, is you have your four bank accounts. So you've got your smile where it says to put 10% in, you Fire, where he says to put 20% in, your everyday, which is 60%, your splurge is 10%, and you should have another account where you've got at least $2,000 in it. And then at some point, he advises you to put more money in it. So you smile as your savings, you know, for your holidays. I put a little bit extra into this just because I don't have a family, and traveling is a little bit more important to me. As for my fire, This is for things that are emergencies, so if you have any car maintenance or car troubles, and I think I put a little bit less in this to allow putting more into my Smile account, and as I get older, I'll obviously change this. If the barefoot ever hears me, he'll probably hate me. Anyway, your everyday is 60% of your wage, and that's for your food, shopping, petrol, all that. So what I actually do with this is when I transfer all my money around he says to do it automatically but I'm just one of those people that I need to physically do it myself but doing it automatically is so much easier but what I do is each month I'll get out money for food shopping and petrol and then I'll stick to that so I set myself a budget and get out in cash and then if I have leftovers at the end of the month it just rolls into the the next month but then at least I know and I can monitor what I'm spending on food and petrol for food it's just food shopping not going out for dinner or anything that's part of the splurge so that's anything mostly mine is spent on drinks that's if you want to go to events or go for dinner or anything like that and then for my mojo I didn't quite have the 2000 at the time but what I'm doing is I'm just putting money into it monthly and I'm just not touching it so that's another thing although he really highly recommends you have the 2000 as for banks I think in his book he gives you a recommendation I use Bank Australia, so shout out to the girls. I have a lot of friends who work there, but they also offer really great interest rates and deals and fees and everything. I'm under 25, so I'm not paying any fees, but if you put a certain amount of money in your accounts, you don't get charged fees. So if that was your pay, you know, you're going to put that kind of money in there anyway. And also Ubank was what I used for my mojo, and that's what Barefoot recommended, and they also have great interest rates, but they're just an online bank. Then for long term and for barefoot, it's one of those things, like I said, you have to stick to it. He does provide nine steps to help you plan and he has kind of what you'd call the planning stage of the book is more for people my age and until you're about 30. It's to become more financially stable. So he helps you get rid of debt and all that kind of thing. And then you grow is where you try and grow more income rapidly and that's after you turn 30 and Ideally, if you have a house, it will be paid off and that kind of thing. 
And then after Grow, it's more about harvesting and that's to help you towards your retirement. It is one of those books that you will constantly have to review, but it will be really good to help you set yourself up financially. And then there's a podcast, The Pineapple Project. So the key learnings from this were if you have a goal that you want to save towards, put a picture of it on your phone, put a picture on your mirror, and if you see it every day, it's a reminder of what your aims are. So if you have one right now, send it to me. Mine at the moment is a picture of Europe just because I know that's my next massive goal to save towards. So it's just more motivation. Also in the Pineapple Project, she talks about how to ask for a pay rise and really to be more comfortable talking about money. Most people aren't comfortable about talking to anyone about their finances and it is really important because if you don't talk about it, you're not going to learn more from other people and just be open about where you want to be financially. Also, she talks about starting a side hustle, which I'll talk about more on later. But the podcast is a lot more lighthearted. It's e- really easy to digest. So maybe start off with that one and head towards Barefoot. Or if you've read Barefoot, check that one out as well. So as for asking for a pay rise, this is massive. I know lots of people really struggle with it. But the tips from the podcast was to not ask about a pay rise in the end of financial review. This is when companies are working out their budgets and where they sit. So maybe ask in one of your check-ins. If you have check-ins every quarter, that would be great. If not, try and schedule some with your boss. But also do your research. Write down your accomplishments, the extra work you do, and the good feedback you've received from other, whether it's customers, team members. It's more of a backup. So you go in feeling confident that you have enough research enough evidence to suggest that you deserve a pay rise. Also, I recommend finding out the median wage for the role you're in. I'll add the website to the show notes. Click on that or you can just Google the median wage. I think Indeed do them as well. There's just an Australian website that helps you look at where you're at. You can add some skills and it'll give you like a really median, a real median wage of that role. Obviously, everyone's will be a little bit different, but at least it'll give you more of an insight into where you're at and where you should be. And then when you go to ask, just make sure you say why you deserve it. Don't talk about why you need it personally, because if you go in with confidence, it'll show to your boss that you deserve this pay rise. So that is the little advice that come from the podcast. And I've read in a couple of articles. So if you're interested in looking for a pay rise, well, I know we all are. Definitely use those tips. And then we just need to get in the habit of talking about money and earning money. So if you want to start a side hustle, check out the podcast Side Hustle by Ruby Lee. I was introduced to Ruby Lee when I was out one night and then met someone. We had mutual friends and he was telling me about it. And I added her on LinkedIn and I started listening to her podcast. And she has step-by-step episodes on how to begin your side hustle. So you look at your passions and where you can make money and how you can do that. And firstly, just using it while you're at work. And she's turned her side hustle into a full-time job. Definitely, if you're interested in starting your own side hustle, check her out. She has amazing tips. And also, just have a positive money mindset and do what works for you, but also learn to say no sometimes if it helps you financially and will make you a lot less stressed. I think one of the major stress factors is money in life. But you just never need to forget that you've got goals and you've got dreams. And if you're having FOMO because you've said no to something, remember those dreams. Also, as part of the Miracle Morning, as I've spoken about in other podcasts, Hal Elrod, he has like a set of affirmations and one of them talks about money. And I think the more we say we're poor and we've got no money, I think the, the poorer we get because I feel like I always say it and I'm not getting anywhere, so I need to stop. But also I think he says in the affirmations that are really important is that money isn't good or bad. It's just what a person does with it. So the more money you have, obviously, the more options you have to make an impact on what you want to do. But you need to also understand that your financial situation is just a reflection on how much you've related to money. So whether it's making it, saving it or growing it, there's really no limits to what you can earn, save or grow. It's all about your mindset and your dedication and determination to 
learn about money, whether it's through books or podcasts or websites, articles. But the more you learn about it and the more willing you are to work hard, the easier it's going to get and the less stressed you'll be. I think we put a lot of stress on ourselves to make more money. But I think if you love what you do and you work hard, the money is just another incentive to come with it. So also, if you just need more information about money, those were the three things I suggest. But there's heaps of books, heaps of articles. I think I've, I've also done a blog on how to save for travel. So if you want that, I'll put the link in the show notes. But all the links will be in the show notes to things that I've read over the past. I think it's just a great time to start thinking about our future finances, whether not just short term. So that's kind of my take on money. I'm definitely trying to stick to my rules against money, but it is hard. It's not, it's never easy. If it was easy, we'd all be very, very rich. So yeah, we'll just leave that there and let me know if you have any money saving tips for people or me, because like I said, I'm going to Europe kind of the middle of this year towards the end and I would love to save as much money as I can. So now let's talk about the weekend. I managed to make it until the 18th of January without drinking, which is awesome. I was actually super proud of that. Felt really good. And yeah, so this weekend I had the hens party of the wedding I'm involved in in a couple of weeks. Nicole made an absolute beautiful hen, posted some photos of her. She looked incredible. Shout out to the water slide and Marrakesh where we had the venues. They're really good places to drink and party and also to the quest we stayed in the quest apartment after our other apartment cancelled on us only a month before I think due to the Australian Open so that was kind of crappy but they were awesome and even though they didn't know we had a mini party in the room thank you guys for not just well I haven't gotten my bond back but look it was only $200 so it's worth it But also, not a shout out to the chicken shop down the road from Marrakesh who told me they serve HSPs, which was the only thing the bride-to-be wanted. And I ordered it and it turned out to be chicken and chips. So that was a fail. Thanks for that chicken shop in the city. I think it's around the corner from CQ. If you've ever been out in Melbourne, every time I go there, I whinge about how crap the food is and I seem to always go back there when I'm in the city. So... Lesson learned, not going back. And, yeah, then the Sunday was spent at a Sunday session, like I said before, but Sunday sessions are a lot of fun, let's be honest. I think we all need to have at least one or two this summer to really enjoy the good weather. I feel like cocktail jugs are a lot cheaper on a Sunday too. So that was the weekend. I've got a hens coming up. This weekend as well, Australia Day weekend, which should be a lot of fun. But yes, summertime is always super busy. I did really well to manage to spend three weekends not drinking. I even became a Deso driver and watched movies, and I don't watch movies. So I just want to leave. I think I'm just really tired. (laughs) I'm very tired, but I need a bit of motivation right now. So let's chat motivation. At work the other week, I was in the kitchen and I overheard someone talking about something that happened in their life. I'm not really sure, maybe a possible breakup or divorce. And their response was, life goes on and you've got to move on. And I know we hear that all the time, but do we actually sit back and think about it? I know I definitely don't, but I'm going to make an aim to start because we can't change what's happened, so we just need to move on. So if someone doesn't show interest in you like you thought they did or the way you do, you don't get the job that you wanted or you things just don't go to plan, well, life does go on and, yeah, you've just got to move on. Pick yourself back up and try your best to keep yourself busy. Focus on you and on something completely different to the issue that you faced and eventually you will just move on. Some things take longer than others but... Don't waste your time thinking about the past and what could have been. It's just a matter of learning, learning from what's happened and how you can grow and be better. My theme word this year is grow. So just think about 
maybe even just write down some things you learnt from it. Whether you do anything with that bit of paper, throw it out. But at least you've got it down and you can remember, okay, well, it didn't work out but I'm going to move on and I've learned these things. And you're always going to learn something from a situation. And just remember that the feelings will pass. It is only a temporary feeling. So life goes on. You've got to move on. And also, if you need more inspiration, Leanne Rhymes has a perfect song about that. Maybe that can be your moving on song. I'll post it in the show notes if you don't know what song I'm talking about, but I'm sure you will. And I think we're going to leave it there. I've rambled, um, but I'm going to leave with a quote. If you set goals and go after them with all your determination you can muster, your gift will take you places that will amaze you. This one was a quote I posted on Instagram photo this week, and it is it actually really inspired me. It got me thinking about what I want and how I'll get there. And I started to think about some plans and some long-term goals and just think about where I can start and where I need to have a game plan. So what goals do you have and what do you, what is your game plan? Think about it. So if you set a goal and you use all your determination to get there, well, really there isn't much stopping you. But I'd love some inspiration on how you plan to achieve your goals. So message me on Instagram and tell me because I really want to hear what you do, whether it's just step by step or you write it down I don't know I just I've got some long-term goals that I want to reach and I need some help and that's it for me and I just want to leave you guys with a bit of self-love so make sure you love yourself because you're amazing you do what you do every day you get up and you're healthy and fit so love yourself find one thing you love about yourself right now pause the podcast think about it replay it whatever all right, see you next fortnight. I hope you got something out of today's show. And if you like this podcast, please don't forget to tell all your amazing friends. Also, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes or any other podcasting app you use. It'll only take a few minutes, but it'll really go a long way to help me out. And if you want more information on things I've talked about in the show, you can click on the link in the bottom of the description that will take you to the show notes. You can add me, message me on Instagram at underscore Mariah Mackinness underscore or my travellers page at the Travellers Antics. If you have any questions, you can message me on there or you can email me at Mariah underscore Mackinness 22 at msn.com. I'd love to hear from you guys. Anything that you've taken from the show or any advice and tips that you have for me, that'd be great. But if you want to read more, you can go to my blog at travellersantics.blog. And what should you read? I have some content from Na Trang in Vietnam, which is the last stop on my Vietnam holiday. You can also read all the series now of Cambodia and Vietnam and follow the journey of the McInnes family. But my latest blog is on Melbourne and all the amazing hidden gems and laneways I have on offer. Also, I have a couple of funny little history stories for you. So make sure you check those out. Thanks, guys. <laughs>